Greetings, friends, and welcome to this, our Sunday morning service on this cold winter's day. In a week that many of us have had, have been on a roller coaster ride in terms of emotions with things that are going on in our country. But we thank God that God continues to carry us through, that God continues to be faithful to us, even though we have been unfaithful. Friends, we continue in our prayerful reflections on the things that are happening in our country, on the scourge of femicide that is going on almost every day in the news we are hearing of one woman or another that has been killed for a number of reasons. But the reality is nothing in life is worthy of taking another person's life. And somehow we all need to prayerfully seek a solution from God. But above that, I still maintain we need to prayerfully engage as a people, as communities, as families about the value of life and about the way we treat each other. Because these things are not being done by people who have no families. These things are not being done by people who just came out of nowhere. They are part of a family. And I'm saying we need to redress our family structures. On this Father's Day, we need to engage seriously with what it means to be a father. We need to engage seriously with the reality that our fatherhood is based on the fatherhood of God. In other words, we have an ideal to live towards. We have an ideal to look up to. And we as church, we need to be the space that defines what fatherhood is all about. We as communities of believers, as communities of faith need to address the reality of who and what can be called a father. And those engagements require not only fathers, but also the involvement of mothers. It requires the involvement of children in defining what it is we seek when we say somebody is a father figure. And from that, obviously, we will then be able to deal with issues of manhood, with what defines a man. And what do we speak to when we say men in our society have not only become an endangered species, but they have become the creature that is to be feared, not only by men, but by everybody. And the reality of being such a creature distorts the image of God, distorts the reality of who God is, because God is seen in who men and women are. So, in light of everything that is happening, we need to deal with ourselves. We need to deal with the spaces around us in our families, in our workspaces, in the communities we have forged, including the faith communities. So friends, the invitation is out there. How do we find ways to be human at the most basic? towards one another. Come, let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, as we come into the service, we come at a time when our hearts are being pulled apart. We come at a time where we are realizing just how difficult it is to remain as your people. We come at a time when we acknowledge that yes, we want to do good, but somehow we, we find ourselves unable to respond because of the situations we find ourselves in. Yet with all that, we bring ourselves to you. We say we know of no other name worthy of our praise. We know of no other God worthy to be called our Father. And so we ask that as you receive our imperfect worship, as you receive our confused worship, as you receive our worship with, filled with our fear, Lord God, you would take it to yourself and formulate it in a way that would bring glory to you. We come before you as a nation. We come before you as the world, confused and fearful of the disease that surrounds us, confused and angered by the violence that surrounds us. Confused and uncertain when we look around ourselves and we do not see your presence in the lives of the people around us. And so Lord God, we pray that as we come into this time of worship, you would open our hearts and our minds that we may see and hear you as you speak to us. Hear these our prayers through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, friends. And we come now to our reading for this morning. And we will ask Bradley to do the reading for us. We read from the book of Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to verse 11. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to verse 11. And we will ask Bradley to do the reading for us. What shall we say then? Should we continue to live in sin so that God's grace will increase? Certainly not. We have died to sin. How then can we go on living in it? Well, surely you know that when we are baptized into union with Christ Jesus, we were baptized into union with his death. By our baptism then, we were buried with him and then shared his death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from death by the glorious power of the Father, so also we might live a new life. For since we have become one with him in dying as he did, in the same way, we shall be one with him by being raised to life as he was. And we know that our old being has been put to death with Christ on his cross, in order that the power of the sinful self might be destroyed, so that we should no longer be the slaves of sin. For when a person dies, he is set free from the power of sin. Since we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ has been raised from death and will never die again. Death will no longer rule over him. And so, because he died, sin has no power over him. And he now lives, in, he now lives his life in fellowship with God. In the, same, in, his, in the same way, you are to think of your lives as dead. So far as sin is concerned, but living in fellowship with God through Christ Jesus. This is the Lord of our Lord. Thank you, Bradley, for that reading. Friends, I 
want to bring to us an understanding of, of Paul's idea of what it is to live as a Christian person. If you recall last week, we dealt with the same book of Romans chapter 5, where he defined our existence as the existence of a sinful person who has been made righteous by the grace of God. He defines our existence in chapter 5 as a people who have been justified. In other words, our sinful nature, in our, our sin no longer is counted against us by the grace of God. Christ Jesus died for us. Now, Paul continues this argument almost in his head. And then he says, all right, if we are saying because we have sinned so much, God has given us so much grace as well. What then shall we say? Shall we then go on sinning? Because the more we sin, it means the more we will get God's grace. And Paul almost wants to say, hell no. That is not what it's all about. What it means, however, is that through that which was done in you at baptism, we get to experience what Christ Jesus went through when he died. But more than a dying Jesus, we get to experience life with the resurrected Jesus. In other words, space for going on sinning is no more. In other words, there, there is no way we can want to live the old life we lived before we were justified by Christ Jesus. Therefore, if we call ourselves Christian, the old has died and the new has come into being. John, in his writing, he gives a different picture. He says, we are being born again. Paul uses the picture of baptism as a picture of dying to self or being dead to self and the resurrection of Christ as being the, the new person within us that lives. Now, note the tense that Paul uses in this passage. When he speaks of being dead, he uses it in the past tense. The old in us is dead. The old in us is no more. That space for us to go back and sin, that space for us to go back and live as people of the past and do the things we did yesterday is no more. We are dead to sin. But note what he does when he says, as Christ was raised, as Christ is risen, we too will be raised. The tense changes to one of those English tenses of present participle, and in other texts you will find it as, as a, a continuous tense. In other words, that which happened at our baptism as we were raised with Christ, we begin to live with Christ, but it doesn't end there. 
we continue living into the resurrection until we come into the fullness of Jesus Christ. So in other words, in Paul's understanding, our being Christian, our being the children of God, begins at our baptism, but doesn't only just begin, it continues to exist within us. It continues to shape us. It continues to mold us from day to day until we come into the full presence of who Jesus is. So our Christian living, we cannot just say, no, now I'm a new person, therefore I don't need to, to worry about anything else. Paul says, with every day that we live, we continue being raised. We continue living into the space of who God created us to be. We continue to surrender ourselves, not as people who once lived in sin, that's gone, but we are seeking to be molded. We are seeking to be shaped as people who live in Christ Jesus. So in the things that we do, in the life that we live, It begins now. Verses 6 and 7 highlight that for us. That this living with Christ, this having conquered death, means our lives begin to live, we live as holy people now. Moving onwards. And then in verse, in verse 8, it's almost a claim that this life we will live forever with Jesus who died for us and was raised from the dead for us. An assurance of God's love. A people who live like that a people who live in the knowledge that they are dead to sin cannot therefore continue to live a sinful life. In Methodist understanding, Wesley would have said, as in chapter 5, we were justified by grace. We are now sanctified by grace. We are being made holy till in heaven we reach perfection. How you live your life, how you interact with your neighbors, how we interact with the world around us, how we care for people, how we treat those who are less fortunate than ourselves, how we treat our employees, how we treat the people around us, all matters to God. Because as we live as people who are being sanctified, we need to live with care that our actions don't just represent us, but they represent the one to whom we belong. At baptism, we are claimed by God for God. At baptism, we are made whole new beings for God. And therefore, every step that we take represents the one to whom we belong. This is where 
we are no longer strangers, but brothers and sisters. And so we are called to live as brothers and sisters. This is where human life takes on a whole new form. And we need to address how human life has become so easy to be taken by other people. What does it mean to be human? What do we mean when we see the humanity of the other person in their eyes? I want to say it doesn't only just mean recognizing another person being made in the image of God. But in Africa, it's about seeing the thing we call Ubuntu, seeing the humanness in the other person. If we live in a society where Ubuntu is vanishing, how we treat other people becomes a painful journey. But Ubuntu also says something else. How do we treat those who have lost their humaneness? I'm hearing many people calling for the return of the death penalty. The state, just like humans, cannot take upon itself the idea that life can be taken. But we need to live in the hope that God's grace can reach even the ones who we deem have lost their humanity. So may God help the church that in our living, in our being, we proclaim a Christ Jesus who stretches his hand even to the most despicable of human beings. We have a challenge as, as a people that it doesn't matter who or what the person has done. We have come to a space where we say, life is precious to God. Even the life of those we deem to be inhuman in every way. So to say we call for the return of the death penalty cannot be the Christian thing to do. We need to stretch our hand to those people. And if we incarcerate them, we need to understand for ourselves what that means. And in partnership with government, we need to be able to say, what programs do we put in place for such people? Because every person is made in the image of God. And when that is lost, Paul calls us to seeking those who are lost to Christ and returning them to Christ. Being born again, being raised from the dead with Christ Jesus means living into a possibility of a new future. So may God help us. May God give us the strength and the courage to stand for truth. But above all else, may God give the church the compassion and the care for those who have been hurt, for those who have been abused, for those who have experienced death in their families through abuse. Amen. 
and we will ask Ubabu Costa to lead us in prayer. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, thanks for all the blessings we have received. Help us to use them wisely and live to your glory. Help us to be aware of your word and your will, as well as the teachings and commands of Jesus. We pray that your Holy Spirit gives us the strength and courage to follow and apply them so that this may help your kingdom to come. Almighty God, we pray for all victims of violence and abuse. We ask you to surround them with your care and protect them by your loving spirit and permit them to enjoy health and healing, wholeness, strength, calmness, peace and love. Most of all, we pray that they feel your presence and be confident in you. Help us, Lord, to play our part in addressing this scourge by speaking out against it. And should we be aware of any violence or abuse, to take appropriate action. Loving Saviour, touch the hearts of those who abuse or harm others. Heal their thinking so that they may turn to you and seek your ways. Help them to know that every human being is a treasure to you. Help them to know that you are a forgiving God and can lead them on a path to a new life. We thank you for the many fathers and men who demonstrate love, compassion and care for their families and those they associate with. Lord, be with us as we go forward. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we close the service then with the benediction? Yes. And now may now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 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 the love of God, God and the and fellowship of the Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit, 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 Spirit be with us all, 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 all now and, 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 and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you everyone for having tuned in and may you have a blessed week ahead and please keep warm please stay safe please make sure you observe all the protocols for COVID so that you and those around you continue to be safe god bless you cheers <laughs>